Good evening, colleagues and enthusiasts of corporate law in Kenya. My name is Matthew Zokoth, and I take this opportunity mm -hmm. to welcome you to Corporate Law Tunnel, uh, a program that I intend to use to serialize some of the key corporate news items that are carried in uh, our local daily newspapers in Kenya. Primarily, I will be relying on certain news items that are carried uh, in the business daily newspaper. For those who are familiar with that newspaper, you will agree with me that uh, it is perhaps the most authoritative newspaper in corporate law, uh, uh, corporate news reporting. Uh, the, the, the program will be based on the assumption, considering now that I'll be relying on third party uh, uh, news items, uh, the program will be based on the assumption that those new item, news items are correct. And if it turns out that the news items as carried in the newspapers are not correct, uh, I, I wish to take this early opportunity to explain that perhaps my commentary or views in respect to those new items uh, may, may change. Now, uh, today is the inaugural uh, pro, uh, commentary in this program, and the item that will uh, uh, set us off is a news item that was carried in the Business Daily newspaper for Friday, January 14, 2022, and it is titled, Biscuit Maker Britannia are for sale over 1.3 shilling billion debt. Now, this is a news item that uh, reports on administration of an allegedly insolvent company called Britannia. Now, Britannia, I believe most of you are aware of their products, uh, biscuits and other confectionery items. Now, uh, it is alleged that uh, Brit Britannia owed a number of creditors, including DTB, DTB uh, uh, up to 1.3 billion shillings, as at last year, uh, the company was placed under administration last year, and that's important, okay, in the year 2021. Now, DTB is allegedly, was allegedly owed up to 900 million shillings, and then the balance of that debt of 1.3 billion was owed to other creditors. Now, uh, a very respected uh, insolvency practitioner, Mr. Peter Kahi, was appointed as uh, the administrator for Britannia. Now, uh, another key issue that is, arises from uh, this news item is that as at, as at the time when the company was uh, placed under administration last year, there was an ongoing uh, winding up proceedings by another creditor, uh, I believe an invoice supplier uh, called Uzuri Foods, a supplier of flour, of flour okay? Uh, and that, that particular supplier was allegedly owed 17.3 million shillings. So those are the key items for purposes of uh, today's discussion on administration of an insolvent company that we will be referring to over and over again. So what is an administration? Ad administration is one of the ways uh, through which a company that finds itself uh, in financial distress can, if uh, in circumstances permit, trade itself out of that financial distress. One of the primary objective of administration is the rescue of the business itself. Uh, it is an unterminal uh, procedure that is intended to rescue a company out of its financial distress. Now, administration is not the only way that a company that finds itself in financial distress may opt for. Uh, there, are, there is a terminal process called winding up, which leads to a liquidation of the company, where the company ceases to exist uh, as, 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 a, as a legal entity. I, I believe opportunity will present itself in future, uh, perhaps from a future news item where we'll discuss more about liquidation. Then there are, if there is, for instance, uh, a, a creditor that, that uh, uh, holds virtually security interest over all or virtually all assets of the company, that particular creditor is entitled by law to uh, appoint what is called 
uh, an administrative receiver. An administrative receiver is also an, in, uh, an insolvency practitioner. But the main objective of uh, administrative receivership is to realize the assets for the benefit of the appointing creditor. Okay, as we will see in the course of my commentary, that administration is looks at broader interests beyond just the the, the appointing uh, creditor. Now, uh, there, there are other ways, uh, alternative ways, which are non-terminal, less terminal. Uh, that uh, a company that uh, finds itself in financial distress can also adopt. Uh, creditors, for instance, can agree among themselves through uh, you know, voluntary arrangements uh, to give the company sufficient time uh, to recover from its financial distress. But for purposes of today's discussion, we'll be focusing on administration as one of the uh, non-terminal uh, uh, processes in insolvency proceedings. Now, uh, administration begins by way of an appointment of an insolvency practitioner called an administrator. And like it has been mentioned in the news item, uh, an administrator was appointed for Britannia in 2021. Now, it is not clear from the news item the process through which this administrator was appointed. And so we'll be just highlighting the various options that could have been available for appointment of this particular administrator. And one of them is through a court appointment, through what is called an administration order. Okay? Uh, the company, its directors or any creditor can apply to court for appointment of an administrator. And the ultimate order that the court gives for the appointment of an administrator is called an administration order. That's what then gives authority to the appointment administrator to take over the management of the company to achieve particular set of objectives, which I will comment on shortly. There are alternative ways. It's not only through court that an administrator can be appointed. If there is a creditor uh, that holds what is called a qualifying floating charge, and a qualifying floating charge is a charge in respect to either all or virtually all assets of the company. That particular uh, creditor is entitled to appoint an administrator. And the only requirement upon appointment is to give notice to the court within a prescribed time of appointment. Okay? Yeah. So it is not only through an application. If a person holds a qualifying charge, they can, of their own motion, appoint an administrator. Uh, directors of a company can also appoint uh, an administrator. In future, perhaps we'll find an opportunity to discuss some of the risks that uh, face directors if they continue to trade at a time when they know that the company uh, is insolvent or technically insolvent. There is a concept called wrongful trading, which I hope we'll find opportunity to discuss more of in future. So um, those, are the, those are the key issues. So perhaps Mr. Peter Kahi was appointed through an administration order, which is not clear from the news item, or through uh, appointment through a, a holder of a, a qualifying floating charge, or through the action of directors uh, of a company. Now, what are the objectives, really, of uh, administration? Like we said, uh, administration is an terminal insolvency process. It is not intended to terminate the existence of the business. The key objective, and those who are familiar with the Insolvency Act, it is carried in Section 522 of that Act. The key objective, the, those, that's very key, the key objective of administration process is to rescue the business, is to enable the business to trade itself out of that insolvency process. Okay? Now, perhaps we need to understand what really, when we say insolvency, what we are talking about. Now, there are two tests that uh, pertain to determination of uh, insolvency. One is through what is called a cash flow test. That when, as and when 
the debts of the company become due, the company is unable to pay those debts. That's through a cash flow test. Or if the assets of the company are less than its liabilities, then uh, that, that company will also be deemed to be insolvent. And whenever we are looking at through either through a cash flow test or through a balance uh, sheet uh, test uh, to determine whether the company is insolvent, we don't just look at the current, current uh, debts, we don't just look at the current liabilities. We look at even the prospective liabilities that, uh, that, that, that can come due, become due in, in a foreseeable future. In practice, it's always within the next 12 months. Uh, these debts uh, will they, these debts be due? So if uh, in the totality of those debts, as and when they become due, the court forms a view that this particular company will be unable to pay for the for the debts, or these particular liabilities will outstrip the assets of the company. Then the court will have a basis to then de determine that this company is or is likely to be. Uh, uh, insolvent, okay, and that is one of the key considerations that the court looks at in determining whether or not to place a company under administration. So, like we say, the, 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 the key objective is the rescue of the business, okay, uh, but that's not the only objective. It is not always that all businesses are capable of being rescued. In fact, majority of businesses are never rescued. So there are other contingent objectives under that section 522 of the Insolvency Act, which are also aimed to be achieved through the process of administration. And the second objective is always to, to achieve a better result for the creditors as a whole. That's, that's key, kindly highlight that, as a whole. Such that the key distinguishing feature between administration and administrative receivership is the scope of focus of this particular insolvency practitioner. In administration, and objective uh, two in section 522 is the, the body of creditors as a whole. The body of creditors includes secured creditors, the preferential creditors, and the unsecured creditors. So the administrator will have a broad view of uh, is mandate or her mandate when tasked to, 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 to administer a company that is insolvent. Now, uh, if the, those first two objectives are not met, rescue is not met, achieving better results for the business is not met, then the third objective is to realize the assets of this business uh, for the benefit, and this is key, of secured and preferential creditors. And certain academics have argued that, look, if one of the objectives of administration ends up to just realizing his sale and you know, uh, gathering sale uh, of the assets and then distribution, then there is really nothing that distinguishes administration from insolvency, from, from, from uh, liquidation, because also a liquidator uh, primarily realizes the assets and then distributes, okay? But now the key concern also has always been that in terms of the, the category of the creditors that the administrator will be focused on, we talk of the preferential creditors and the secured creditors. Remember, there's a third category of creditors called the unsecured creditors, such that you find that uh, in objective number three, the scope of the, con of, of, of the mandate of the administrator then falls short of satisfying that broader consideration of the creditors as a whole uh, to a more narrow uh, you know, group of creditors being preferential and secured. By the preferential creditors are the employees, tax authorities, and secured creditors are those who hold uh, security interest over, over, over the assets. So, those are the, the key considerations, and perhaps uh, we, we can then now apply to what is happening uh, in this case of uh, uh, Britannia. We, we are told in the business daily reporting 
that Mr. Peter Kahi uh, has placed uh, this company for on sale. Okay. Uh, perhaps that is now at objective number three. And we want to imagine that, remember his appointment was last year, in 2021. He has had the opportunity to consider these three objectives. First and most probably, he tried to rescue, most probably he tried to rescue this particular company. Since last year, he formed a judgment by the which companies can be rescued. Those companies that perhaps still you know, they, maybe they just made a wrong investment decision. But if you look at maybe the, the quality of the business, it's still okay uh, in terms of the customer base. They still retain the customer base. The suppliers are retained. But because of maybe one uh, investment decision, uh, they, 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 they tripped. Okay? So if, for instance, the bankers are willing to support this business to trade itself out of this bad investment single or a few investment decisions, such a company can be rescued, okay? Uh, those that perhaps are meant to achieve only, you know, some better returns uh, to the creditors are those perhaps with outdated, outdated machineries uh, so that uh, it, it takes a lot of effort for them to come to life. So it is less expensive if, for instance, they are sold at uh, as going concerns, uh, rather than trying to rescue them to come into full operation. But instances where perhaps the business has reached a level where it has developed a bad reputation, for instance, uh, uh, the key personnel have left the company, perhaps the founders of the company are no longer in existence, or for whatever reasons, the business is no longer accepted within the community as a good venture, okay? Uh, it, the administrator will most likely make the decision to, to realize the assets of that business and then distribute whatever amount or proceeds of uh, that realization to the secured and the preferential creditors. So, Mr. Peter Kahi, I believe from the reporting, has reached now to objective number three. There has been the attempt to rescue, I want to believe, and attempt to, uh, attempt to realize better results for the secured and preferential creditors. Uh, and now the only option that uh, is available to him is to sell this particular uh, business. Now, what is the effect? Maybe someone may ask, why, why, why would a company opt for uh, a morator, for, for, for administration? Now, the moment that a company is placed in administration, uh, it enjoys a benefit called a moratorium. And a moratorium is kind of a relief that protects the company from certain proceedings that are disruptive of its affairs. For instance, if there was an ongoing winding up proceedings, if the, if, if the administrator is appointed through an administration order, that winding up petition is dismissed. So when we talk of, for instance, the Uzuri Foods, some, at some point we talked of Uzuri Foods which had started uh, uh, winding up proceedings against the company, I think, last year, as at the time at least when the administration process started. If the appointment of this administrator was through an administration order, then that winding up petition was dismissed. And that's why maybe it's the reason why we, other than just a highlight of that petition, there is nothing much reported on it in the news item. Now, if uh, the appointment is through, uh, you know, a holder of a qualifying floating charge, then the, the winding up petition is not dismissed. It is suspended. And so that if the, there is... If, if the administration uh, uh, process does not uh, result in its objectives, then the court will have then a session to consider uh, the, the petition to its conclusion. Okay? Yeah. So the key, the key objective is to give the company that breathing space in the form of a moratorium. Now, in instances where the, the, the administration is through a court appointment, uh, the process takes time. 
and in the intervening period before the administrator is appointed, there is what is called an interim moratorium. That interim moratorium is important for the reason that if, for instance, you know, judgment uh, creditors, decree holders know that this is a company that is a candidate for administration, they may rush the moment that uh, you know, a party commences the administration process, they may rush to start uh, uh, enforcing against the company, we are thereby frustrating the administration process itself. Or if, for instance, there's a landlord who is aware that this company is due for uh, an administration order, they may distress for rent. Okay? If there are suppliers uh, that had supplied goods to this particular company, they may start repossessing the goods that they supplied and thereby frustrating the process. And so the moment that uh, the process of court appointment of an administrator is started, automatically there is an interim moratorium that is enjoyed to preserve the subtraction of the administration. Uh, thank you very much for listening to me in this today's program. I hope you found uh, uh, this session helpful. Uh, and insightful. I welcome all comments so that together we can explore further uh, this area of law that is uh, quite timely, uh, particularly post COVID 20, uh, post COVID 2019, where most businesses definitely are struggling. Thank you for your time. And once again, my name is Matthew Sokot. And bye bye for now.